Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Top 5 Skyrim Mods of the Week. I'm your host, Cameron Robinson. Yep. But someone else is driving this week. It's Sebastian it's Ford. Me. And I have all of this free real estate <laughs> over to my right. It's weird over here, Seb. Yeah, it's... This chair, which I'm in right now, doesn't have wheels, but the pilot chair does. Yeah, and I've got, I, I've got spinning. Have I been downgraded? No, we're getting sidetracked. We are, yeah. yes. We're getting sidetracked. What are we doing today? All right, okay, so this week is a very special episode. It's all about how to mod Skyrim. Mm. Now, this is something we obviously do every single week for this show. Um, now, the reason why Seb's piloting is because it used to be part of my duty for the show to do all the mod stuff and the installing. But over the last kind of, I don't know, a few months, maybe six months, it's this been all guy. about this guy. this guy. So he's better versed. So he is in the driving seat. I'm going to show you guys how we do our modding on Steam. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to have a look at the Nexus mm -hmm. and a couple of other little bits of SKSC. We're going to do another episode later where we look at EMBs and uh, yeah. console commanding. Going to do that separately. Today, we're going to start off with Steam. So let's kick things off. This is our uh, very, very snazzy desktop. Seb, I've it's installed not a big this. change. I've installed this on every single desktop All in the entire of CBS done. Interactive. All we've actually done is added a start bar <laughs> down here. <laughs> That's the whole thing. Usually in the install of a hard disk copy of uh, of Skyrim, mm -hmm. um, you'll have to associate it with Steam anyway. If somehow that hasn't happened, you need to come over to here where it says Games, and you want to go Activate Product on Steam. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you go through this process here, Agree, uh, and then what you want to do you in You mean you read carefully every single oh, read TNC? <laughs> every last little bit, and then hit Agree. And then what you want to do is you want to put the, uh, the code on the back of your box yeah. in there. The important thing is that you can hit play from here because yeah. when we hit play and it'll go through the process of launching Skyrim, we get this lovely window. Mm -hmm. Because you probably, I like yeah. to think that's Kevin Van Nord. The mods are going to appear in data files here, but before we do that, we need to go and actually get yeah, some. Yes, so let's show them how we how you find them. Now you, you use what's called the Steam Workshop, which yep. you must have heard us talk about beforehand. You can get to it directly through Steam. You can find you can see it right there on screen, or you can go through browser. It's it's up to you. Yeah. Um, you just need to be logged in either way. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if we look at now, you can see we're logged in as our, our account up there. And there's a number of games you can do Steam Workshop, but obviously we only care about Skyrim. So we're going to go straight there, across there. Other games? <laughs> other games. I think not. Forget that. And as you can see here, this is where you'll get all of the most popular, latest games. You can sort by mm. um, most popular today, this week, top rated of all time. Yeah. And you can even go in and just take a look at the ones that you already have. Yeah, that you subscribe to. You can see the the general star rating of oh, what people cool. have thought of it. Um, you'll get a lot of screenshots of being able to see what it's going to do. And then finally, you've got this little button here, subscribe. Yes. So if I were to click that, and then we're subscribed. Now what that means is that you've effectively, in this case, subscribed to the mod, and it's ready to go. All you need to do is come back to your library, hit play, mm -hmm. and yeah. then when you get this window here, it's going to begin the download process. It's very, very important that you sit through this process. As you'll see, it's just checking for updates on the ones that we already have. Mm -hmm. But when we get to mod eight, it'll start to download it. And if, like, if you went and pressed play now, it's not going to have downloaded it yet. So therefore, it's not going to work. So oh, there, well, it there goes. you go. Successfully that downloaded. That took all of half a second. <laughs> and just to confirm, you can go into data files, scroll down to the bottom. Midas Magic is there. Pay attention to the descriptions and the notes that you get um, with each mod because often there'll be things in there which will completely tell you how to use them. And if you mm. don't pay attention, it just won't work for you. For example, if you're hoping to smith this armor, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> you're going to be well out of luck. Yeah, because it says there you need to use a command console. And actually, if you scroll down in the comments, there, there we go. Someone's actually put all the console commands in there for you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, pay attention to the notes. They are your friend. So, Cam, it's about time we've probably found our favorite mod of all time. Oh, of course. And the easiest way, of course, is just to search. Oh, actually, there's look at, a... <laughs> look at number else one. Is number one. Number one is Kevin Van Nord's Tools of the Trade. I like that searching. Who's, who's Kevin Van Nord? Never He's, heard of him. Sounds glorious. But I think we'll subscribe to that one as well. But most importantly, Explosive yes. Chickens. Yes. Five-star rating, one of our favorites. It is a wonderful mod. So we just need to go through... Hit subscribe, and it's done. It's done, and you too can explode your character with chickens. This is a screen you're going to get used to seeing, yes. which is where it says, the save you're about to load up used to count on mods that you've either changed, removed, or shuffled around a little bit. Yeah, and we have done that. This is not a problem. No. I mean, 
you know, it can cause problems later on when you start getting a little bit complicated, but the general point is to hit yes. It will crash sometimes by going continue, but I find if you go load, that's a much safer way mm. to get back into that file if it's missing mods. I have had issues with just going continue game, mm. just so you know. But let's see how it goes. Maybe this will be, we'll be lucky this time. Ugh, with your horrible inverted controls. <laughs> Wait, Ugh, what? What kind of Neanderthal are you? Oh, do you not invert? Never. Oh, wow. Never. Weird. I'm always Kevin Van Nord, therefore Kevin Van Nord is inverted. But here are some chickens. Is anyone want me to find out if they are indeed explosive? I have no idea. Are they? They sure are. <laughs> they definitely, <laughs> definitely are explosive. All right, so explosive chickens definitely works. Definitely. But we also installed the Midas magic one too. Yeah. So let's check that. So if you go to the console yep. and go help Midas, because uh, usefully all the spells begin with Midas. And mm -hmm. if you page up, you that's can another, see yeah. they are definitely there. Brilliant. Loads so, uh, of spells. Why Let don't we uh, Why don't we add one just to okay. double check? So the one I, I like the look of here is Midas Greater Whole Greater Heat Beam. All right, let's give this a go. Oh. <laughs> wow, what a heat beam! Oh, there we go. It's, it's definitely uh, working. That is a beam that leaves fire behind. That's pretty awesome, actually. Yep. So that that was so simple. All we did was go on Steam Workshop, hit subscribe, wait for it to download, boot up the game, and there it is. We have a heat beam. Done. That's Done. so yeah. easy. Yeah. Too easy almost. 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 And that's it. It really is like that easy to yep. get mods from the workshop. It is a doddle. Mm -hmm. However, that is not where you get all the mods. Sometimes to get the better mods, you need to go to another place called the Nexus. So if you go to nexusmods.com, you'll see that this is a website for loads of games. Mm -hmm. uh, but we want to go to the very first one, Skyrim, Skyrim of course. Skyrim Nexus. Yeah. And the very, very first thing you're going to need to do is install the Nexus Mod Manager. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be the hub where you're going to keep all of the mods that you download from this website. Mm -hmm. It is imperative that you download this, and it's also going to require you to have an account. Very quick and easy to set up. Yeah, and free as well. You don't have to pay money to have an account. I think there is a payable option in the Nexus um, to support it. it. You don't need to. By all means, if you want to support it, that's great. But you don't need to pay any money to get access to the mod manager. Read the T's and C's. Agree. Obviously, we've read, read them, them before. Thoroughly. We've read them a thousand oh, times. Oh, yeah. I could quote them to you. Yeah. Okay, once you get to this part of the installation, there's a little trick that might save you a bit of time. Mm -hmm. It defaults to wanting to put it in program files like usual, uh, but it will require you, in order to work properly, to run the program as an administrator, which yeah. is a bit of a pain. To save you that, we just do this. We Instead of program files, Putting knock it games. into games. Yeah. So then you hit next, next, yes to everything, next, install, and you're ready to go. When you first open it, you'll be faced with this, where it will scan your computer for all, all the, the games the, yeah. that you it can support. Uh, we only have Skyrim, so we can tick that as yes. Uh, we don't have any of these installed, so we can just cancel the search. We don't need to have any of these going. You need to log in with the same Nexus login that you created on the website exactly uh you can tick you know stay logged in it will work in offline mode uh but for the safety well for the convenience of making it run every time just set it to leave login um now, but, however i remember the very first time i installed this i got confused because i couldn't find the button that would bring me to the list of mods mm -hmm. um, and it's actually that little one with the green arrows so give first things first give that a click and that will normally be blank um and then that's where your mods will appear when you add them so let's show how you add a mod. Love to. Now, when you come to the Nexus website, you're going to get a nice little carousel showing the week's most popular mods. But if this is your first time modding using the Nexus, where you're going to want to go first is up to files, mm -hmm. top files. And this is going to give you the 100 most popular mods on the Nexus. Uh, frankly, they're all worth checking out. And we have some of them here, like Sky UI, we use all the time. Equipping overhaul we've mm -hmm. showcased in the past. Real, Real Vision, Vision ENB. We're huge fans of that one. We'll come, to, we'll come to that next time, next time we do a special episode to show you how to install an EMB. But yeah, that's a very good mod. So here's one we've shown off before. And yeah. let's, let's go with this one again. So better shaped weapons. So okay. all you have to do is click on here. Now with Nexus Mod Manager installed and open, you'll be able to see download via Nexus Mod Manager, NMM. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not always going to be the case, but in this case, we can simply yeah. click that. Most mods on the Nexus are Nexus Mod Manager um, compatible, mm -hmm. but they aren't all. It goes straight to the Mod Manager, as you can mm -hmm. see there. It's just been downloaded, and you can now see it's in your list. Yeah. And to enable that mod, all you need to do is click Activate Selected Mod, click Preparing Mod. You get a nice little bing. 
mod was successfully activated. Yeah. You even get a little thing over here which gives you some <laughs> info on the mod. In this case, yeah. liking vanilla swords, that's, that's a, a paddling. paddling. Yeah, exactly. Which it is. <laughs> the ones with green ticks are ones that you have enabled. So mm -hmm. there's kind of like, uh, when you do the, the workshop, there's one process, subscribing, and that automatically enables them. Yep. You have to do two process, processes for the mod manager. You have to download, and then you have to enable. Yes. So that the ones with the X's, they're not broken, they're just not enabled. So we could enable DynaVision, for example, just by clicking the little puzzle piece with the arrow. Done. Done. There it is. And now if you want to disable it, just click the red arrow. Oh, or, well, that, that deletes that, it. That's that'll how you, delete it. That's how you delete it, Seb. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Now, the same as installing a mod on Steam Workshop, you want to go and take a look at the description <laughs> because it will give you a lot of information yeah. on things like mod clashes, mm -hmm. uh, things that it works really well with, and specifically what the mod is going to do to your game. Um, once you've had a good read of that and you've got your head around exactly what it's going to do, you can also go over here to Files. Now, on Steam Workshop, you simply hit subscribe and it's done. When you're on the Nexus, you're going to be given options based on which um, which of the DLC that you've got. You know, you might have the Dawnguard patch or the Dragonborn patch, or you might want an older version based on different yes. changes that have been made. Mm -hmm. All of those are here and you can download the ones that you wanted. You can see under old versions mm -hmm. just by clicking download with manager. So the one we downloaded a minute ago when we went straight to download with Nexus Mod Manager on the main page, that just downloads whatever set as the main file. Main which file is the one that's there. there. And but that's usually the most recent. Yes. But there will be occasions, as Seb said, uh, with clashes, which we'll talk about more later, where you are going to want access to these other ones. And mm -hmm. the files the files window is your friend in that look in that situation. Always. Now here we are with one of our favorite mods of all time, oh, yeah. Climates of Tamriel. Uh, it kind of makes your game look pretty gorgeous. Just mm -hmm. click on that. Oh. Ah, oh, such climate. Ah, oh, so many weathers. <laughs> so many Tamriels. Lovely. Brilliant. Now, uh, you're not always going to have the option to download with managers. In fact, if you can see here, this one doesn't have the button. Yeah. Uh, this is the main file you'll need. But just to demonstrate, if you hit download manually, you'll Ooh. be given a load of mirrors. And frankly, you can kind of check, uh, you know, click on any of them, and that will start downloading in the background. Yeah. Now, it also is worth noting that this is one way you're going to need to add the two patches based on which of the DLC you're running. Yes. So, we're running Dawnguard and we're running Dragonborn. For the sake of speed, I'm going to download with the manager. And there are also optional extras that you can add to a mod that maybe you want, maybe you don't want. So, in Climates of Tamriel, you've got optional sounds that you can add. Uh, Ooh, winter edition. You can add winter edition. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Needs Br more winter, please. <laughs> Brings winter to the whole of Skyrim, just in case, you know, oh, those wow. little warm patches were starting to irk you. Yeah. <laughs> Warmth here? <laughs> Nonsense. Never. Give me chills. And now that Climates of Tamriel has finished downloading in our browser, we can yep. add it manually with this button here. Add mod from file. Uh, it goes straight to our downloads. Yeah. Climates of Tamriel, open. And it and shoots. Give it a second. Just appear. Done. There it is. It just appears go. in your list. It can be a bit quicker sometimes. Yeah, well, you know, the free version of Nexus Mod Manager actually restricts the download speed. So if you download it manually and then add it, you'll actually get it that little oh, bit quicker. Oh, I didn't know that was why it was quicker. Oh, it there does. There you go. Uh, so once it's downloaded, in this case, you can hit Activate Mod. And you have a couple of options. Oh, yeah, not, I like these mods. Yeah, <laughs> the not... ones that give you loads of ways <laughs> to tweak it. Like, so this is you, you would never get this on the Steam Workshop. No. But in the Nexus, you can have these air ways to tweak these mods to your heart content. Mm. It's really great. So in, you can click through all of these and it will show you what's what. So Dungeons and Caves, for example, default setting installs Climates of Tamriel with original game brightness for Dungeons and Caves. Here we go. Torches are essential with this version. Oh, I like that. Torches are helpful with this version. Yeah, okay. So we're going to keep it default. Okay. In this case, it's just changing how dark it's going to get. And here, it even gives you some examples. Oh, this nice. is the default vanilla experience. If we go to the very bottom, oh my it's God. basically pitch black. Yeah. So we can hit finish. Goes through the install. It's a bit bigger, this one. And it's done. Now, it's time to add the patches. So if we go mm. to Dragonborn, we want to hit activate. And it'll say a different version of this is already detected. Would you like to upgrade? If you set no, it will install the mod normally. So that's what you want to do. Hit no. Done. And then you want to do the same with the Dawnguard patch. Just hit enable. Hit no. no. Done. Now, if you come over to plugins, this is where they're all listed. Yeah, so this is kind of like the mod manager equivalent of that data files bit of the launcher. In fact, it's exactly the same. Yeah. So what we have is the load order in which things are going to be loaded. So at the top, we've got Skyrim. 
That's, 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 that's the, the game, right? That's, that's the, the game. game. Okay. That is the game. We won that first. Followed by Dawn Guard as the DLC, Dragon yeah, Ball yeah, yeah. DLC, Half File DLC. And a bunch the, of other stuff. Yeah. Now, some of them will be in a force place that you simply just can't move them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Others, you'll be able to move around. The load order is important because you need to make sure that the necessary files for your mods are loaded first. And the way to check this is simply to come down to one, say, Climates of Tamriel. Yeah. You can see the list of things that it requires. It requires Skyrim. It requires the update and Dragonborn and Climates of Tamriel. Uh, so all of them should be above it in the load order, exactly. correct? Exactly. Right. So Climates of Tamriel is all the way up here. So yeah. it's there. Uh, Skyrim, obviously, already there. And Update and Dragonborn, yeah. it's all in place. So it's often quite good at putting them in sensible places anyway. Mm -hmm. Another good practice with this is if you're installing mods of a similar type, it could be quite good practice to group them together. The ones that end up being a little bit tricky, often it's best to put them low, as in right at the bottom of your load, yeah. order, load order. It sometimes gives them just that little extra chance of working and being a bit more compatible with other mods. Now, Seb, some mods you get from the Nexus require you to install additional things. Yep. Um, the main one is something called the Skyrim Script Extender. Yes. Again, it just loosens the shackles on the modding community, allows them to do more. Yeah. And some mods, like one of my favorite Sky UI, which we use every week, changes yep. your user interface, makes it look something like that. That's the one. To get it to work at full potential, you need to install this thing. If we look at requirements, it says it there, the Skyrim Script Extender. You just give that a click. It's not the most glamorous website in the world, <laughs> but it is the Don't right one. Don't know what you're talking about. It's beautiful. <laughs> so you want to go to where it says Current Build, Installer, give that a click. It's a very, very small file indeed. Once it's open, give it an install. Next. Install, do 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 do. During the install process, it will actually look for Skyrim, and if it doesn't see it, it will flag that up. Yeah. Um, and it's looking for it in the default kind of locations. Uh, you, as you can see, that went straight through, so that's not a problem. The next time you open Nexus Mod Manager, you'll see that in the top left, this little drop down, where it normally only had launch Skyrim, you'll now have launch SKSE. Yeah. And for uh, Sky UI to work properly, which we've already got enabled here, that has to be there. If you click it, it will just load the game. Thank you, SKSE. Mm. You're all right. <laughs> you get to stay. You live. You <laughs> die last. <laughs> yes. All right, so Seb, that's pretty much it. That's how you mod on both the workshop and on the Nexus. Mm. However, yes. however, sometimes, try as you might, the mod you want just won't work. We had this recently with um, a kind of a Lord of the Rings complete overhaul. Oh, um, what a poor, nightmare. Poor Seb here hit his hours, head against the desk for hours, hours trying to get it to work. And we just couldn't. We just couldn't. Yeah. And uh, you're gonna, it's going to happen sometimes. But there are some kind of general principles that can help you get mods to work more often. <laughs> yes. Now, sometimes you're going to load up the game and you're going to get to the loading screen and it's just going to crash the desktop. It's not even going to get to the boom, boom, boom. Nope. It's going to go yeah, and it, then You'll get to various different stages and it will fall on its butt yeah. and you'll end up right back here and that staring at the mod manager. And that generally means you've just, and this usually happens after you've just installed a new mod, mm -hmm. and this is why you shouldn't install mods in batches yeah. because then you have to use a bit of trial and error to work out which one is causing the problem. Mm -hmm. So it's good, the best practice is to install one, test it, install another, test it. Yeah, yeah, it takes a bit longer, but that way if something goes wrong, you know where the issue is. Is. Yeah. Don't forget as well, uh, as you're enabling and disabling mods, you do need to reload the game. That's yes. something that I've <laughs> noticed a lot of people run into. They go, why isn't it here? Well, you need to close and bring re reopen. <laughs> you start the but game yeah, again. If you go through and if you're crashing and you just disable mods one by one and you eventually will run into your problem mod and then often it's a load order issue or it's downloaded incorrectly or it needs a patch yeah. um, or it's just crap and yep. it's broken. Sometimes people make mods <laughs> and they test them but they don't test them enough or there'll be something different with who knows maybe your graphics card or just some part of it because remember with, with PCs it's always more complicated. Yeah, there's always, there's always a chance that no matter how hard you try a mod won't work. What I would say is don't worry because there's like a bazillion mods for you to choose from. Now the last thing before you're all set is just making sure that all of the mods that you want enabled are ticked here. Yeah. So if you want Valyria on or off, you need to make sure it's there. Realistic piercing arrows. Oh, I want that. Give Take it a it. click. Thank you. Okay, but before you go, launch Skyrim, the regular one, not SKSC. Yeah. So you want to launch Skyrim. You need to make sure all of the mods finish checking, updating, and downloading. You'll get a message, finished synchronizing, subscribe mods. Yay! Then, last thing, data files, 
make sure they're all checked in here as well. Sometimes yeah. the ones that you've just subscribed to will be there, but unchecked. So Apocalypse, Magic of Skyrim. I want that. Oh, I Give want me. that. Yep. Give that a tick. Hit OK. Yeah. And then you're ready to go. Yeah. So that's it, pretty much in a nutshell. If you think yeah. we've missed anything, um, if you're an expert modder and you think, guys, you forgot to mention that little subtlety, do let us know in the comments. We'll address it next week. Yeah. Next week, we'll return to standard Skyrim yeah, it'll mods. It'll be a regular episode. Hey, we'll have some mods for you. Hooray. Absolutely. And in fact, uh, the mods that you voted on last week, mm. if you successfully found the vote <laughs> link, uh, will be used next week's show. We're not just ditching them. We're going to include oh, yes. them in next week's show. So, so we've actually got a bonus week to vote. Yes. Oh, my God. There's already mm. more than a 1,000 votes cast on this week. It's a wow. popular one. Wow. One of the mods is quite far out in front, but, you know, if you if you really want to see the other one, get in there, get your votes. Yeah. Now the that's... link for that, by the way, <laughs> is tinyurl.com forward slash Skyrim 31 was taken, which yes. it was. And that's on screen right now. Yeah. The the thing is, inevitably, <laughs> somebody figured out what our process was and kind of jumped ahead of things. And um, maybe don't go adventuring too far <laughs> in, in future links because not all of them link to stuff that's... Savory. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it took us to this website. I'd never I'd never heard of I'd it. I'd never even heard, heard, of, it heard of it. Yeah. It's like YouTube, but for adults. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Who knew that was a thing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yes. In fact, I remember a conversation with you, Seb, months ago when you were like, God, I bet someone's going to go ahead. Somebody's going to do someone's this. Someone's going to steal these tiny URL links and screw it up for us. And I was yeah. like, no, they wouldn't do that. He was right. Yes, I Which was one right. of you was it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I kudos to yeah, you, sir. One funny, internet actually. to you. That's pretty Kevin funny. Van Noor gives you a thumbs up, and yeah. he usually doesn't yeah, gesture any that. other way no. except with killing. <laughs> thumbs down, because you're dead. But, um, <laughs> but yes. But that's not just because we're done with morning, Seb. It's not the end of today's show. We no. do have we got loads of questions yes. um, from you guys, so let's go to them now. So, Seb, because I'm in the passenger seat today, yes. that means I get to do the reading of the comments. You're welcome. Do that. a good job of this. Oh, this is, I'm going to ace this. This is the highlight of my this week. This is the usually. ace bit. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. First, first question comes from YouTube from mm. a chap called or a chapette called Ark Archie, and the question is thusly. I love their reaction to Naruto. So, mm. what game do you guys like better, Skyrim or Oblivion? I love that question. I love the I love the clouds are white. But what do you think about the <laughs> political climate in the U.S. right now? It's like a completely well, non sequitur, uh, but yeah. okay, I like that. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm gonna be honest and say that my favorite is Skyrim. Oh, and, yeah. I, and don't get me wrong, I loved Oblivion, but me the, too. The you know the distance that we've gone with Skyrim, oh. and that you know all of the content that we've squeezed out of that game. It has to win. In it my mind, Skyrim is more like a person than mm. a game, which sounds ridiculous, but the amount of time I've spent with this game, like at home and at work, it's almost like a significant other. It's yeah. really weird. And I did love Oblivion, and I played the shit out of Oblivion, but Skyrim is my favorite. We don't swear on this show. Did you bleep me? I can bleep you. You can bleep me. It demanded swearing. It did. This is from, again, YouTube, from GDF Gamers, who simply says, Why doesn't Cam ever play? I think you've got that one the wrong I way do, around there, that's pal. That's all I do. Cam all I do is play the plays. game. In answer to why I don't play, yeah, it's... This is uh, Seb. I, I don't really have an answer for that. It's just, you know, Cam drives and uh, I navigate. Yeah. It's just our duo. That's yeah, how that's we how do. That's how we work. That's yeah. how we work. As you can see, it all goes horribly wrong when <laughs> I drive. <laughs> swap around. Um, all right, next question. This is from GameSpot, mm. and this is from Lurking Lion. Ooh, mm. Good name. Cam and Seb, yes. have either of you two actually created mods for Skyrim? If so, you should showcase them. Well, how no. many mods have you made, Seth? I've, I've made exactly zero mods. I have also made zero yeah. mods. No, yes. we, we love checking out the mods that the community puts together, but uh, we ourselves are, are not modders. We haven't made any. We know that there are some guys out there who mm. showcase mods, who and also make, make mods. Them. For example, Gopher, he yeah. makes some awesome, also um, Immersive HUD is yeah, one of his. Yeah, one of my favorites. Yes. Thanks, Gopher. I love that mod. Yeah, so I know there are some guys out there that showcase and make them, but we just, mm -hmm. we just have a look at the ones that the community has made for us. Yeah, and I would also say, actually, as we are, this episode is about modding Skyrim. It's mm -hmm. another really good point is that we are obviously not the only show that you can watch that talks about modding Skyrim. No, there's oh, naturally we're the best. But there's there's more technical ones where people <laughs> will showcase just one mod and we'll go into like really deep dive on them. So if you want that as well, yeah. you can watch those ones as well in addition to watching our show. Don't leave us. Obviously. Don't, you please can cheat on us, but don't, don't leave please us. Please don't go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By all means, be promiscuous, <laughs> but come back for the Cam and Seb, okay? Yeah. Next question. This is from Kiwi9000, which is my Wonderful. favorite name of the day so far. Um, and it simply says, 
Why do you have such beautiful singing voices? Oh. Will you do a duet next week? And then someone else replied to Kiwi9000 saying, Yes, okay. please. A duet. <laughs> a duet, yeah. I think they want a duet. Is that because of our little... Um, oh, we sung a little bit of Lionel Richie last like, week. That's what it was. I made it into the edit. <laughs> Hello. We're going to sing. Is it Violet Real you're looking for? I long to see, I can see you walk on the outside map. my door. I didn't realize that was going in there. Well, thanks, thanks you know, for that, that's, we, we get a little distracted sometimes when we're walking around Skyrim. It's, um, it's a big place. Yeah, okay. yeah. Sometimes you need to have a sing-along. Yeah. Um, so are we going to sing something? We can, we can sing. We can sing something. We can sing. What are we going to sing, Cam? Um, you choose. Okay. You pick the question, oh, you choose. Oh, I've, I've thought of a good one. Okay. Okay, this is an exclusive Cam and Seb singing moment. It's got nothing to do with modding Skyrim, so if you came for the mods, you can probably you can go now. now. <laughs> okay, so it's going to go this. Uh, you, you, I really hope you know this song. What if I was to say, World was on fire, no one can save me but you. Strange what, what desire make foolish people do. No one. Wanna fall in love? No, this world is gonna break your heart with, with you. <laughs> well, that happened. You know what? It's actually just reminded me of another question that I saw on oh YouTube. God. What was that? Uh, and it was no, it's a very reasonable question. Okay. Are we friends in real life? Oh yes, we actually are. We are. Yeah, that, yeah. I noticed that. Yeah, we we we've been known to hang out. I know where he lives. Yeah, I've been to your house too. You have. That was like that one time. I was there last weekend, and you, you weren't were. even there. That's how weird it is. All right, I was there we go. I was visiting Martin. It's oh, okay. fine. Anyway, enough about our lives. Well, well, Seb, they always say to finish on a song. Yep. <laughs> which is, I guess, what we've done. So that's the end of this week's episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Do not worry, though. Next week is a return mm. to normal Skyrim Mods of the Week format. Yeah. We will have five new mods. One Kevin Van Nord. Us two hosts. But most important of all, I will be back in the wheelie chair. I'm going to miss it. It will be mine. I'm going to miss it. It will be it. mine. Yeah, and uh, we're also going to be doing more tutorial episodes later mm. on. We're going to uh, do one on installing EMBs, because yep. I know we've had a couple of requests on that. Yeah. Uh, we also thought we'd do one on the best use of console commands, because we realized mm. that we use those to death. They are great. So uh, we'll be doing those later on, uh, maybe in a couple of weeks' time. But yeah. next week, we're going to be back to regular adventuring. Yes, and if you have any other suggestions for kind of tutorials or anything like that you want to see, you can get in touch with us by, well, you can tweet at me, at CamFrazRob, mm -hmm. or at him, at ReadySebiGo, or you can leave a thing in the comments, or you can use our Twitter hashtag, hashtag GSSkyrim. Loads of ways to get in touch with us. Let us know what you think. But as I say, we'll be back next week with Kevin Van Nord. So we'll see you then. Bye.